Hello, welcome to the Monday, June 7th, 2021 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Just to get us started, Jim noticed a couple of odd spikes lately on port 37, in particular UDP. Now, at TCP, we did see some requests, some HTTP requests that looked like they were looking for Ethereum wallets. So if you have any insights there, if you know any Ethereum wallets that listen on port 37, uh, then uh, please let us know. It would be interesting to figure out uh, what attackers are actually looking for here. And QNAP released another update for its products, this time affecting Video Station. Video Station is typically used if you are connecting surveillance cameras uh, to your QNAP device. So the QNAP device here doesn't just store the videos, it will also provide access to them, which is why often people do leave uh, this feature exposed. Well, you never should do so, and a patch is available now for uh, this remote code execution vulnerability. No details in the advisory whether or not authentication is required. There is also a proof of concept that was released, but it's not really clear if it was for this specific uh, feature or if this is for a different vulnerability that hasn't really been patched yet. The proof of concept does not refer to a video station, also it doesn't list a CVE number, which makes me think that this may be a totally different or maybe not an issue at all. Now I'm not going to link to this proof of concept because uh, the write-up is a little bit uh, weird overall and a link to GitHub that supposedly contains the code leads to a 404 page. Now uh, GitHub just clarified their policy on posting proof of concept code to its site. In the past, it was uh, pretty open and you often found a proof of concept code on GitHub, but there have been a couple of instances lately where GitHub has removed uh, exploit code from its site. What they now decided pretty much as their policy is that it will remain okay to post exploit code to GitHub unless it's being used in an active attack. The updated policy states that they explicitly permit dual use security technologies and content related to research into vulnerabilities, malware and exploits, but they also say that they will remove a code that is currently being leveraged in ongoing attacks. I imagine if, for example, a bot will directly pull a file from GitHub, as has happened sometimes, that may be ground for removal. Where it gets a bit more tricky is maybe, for example, have bots or exploit tools being written that are based on code being published on GitHub. We'll have to see how a GitHub will deal with those situations. And Cisco released uh, patches for a number of different vulnerabilities. One of particular interest is a vulnerability in WebEx, a malicious WebEx recording file if opened in the WebEx player could lead to arbitrary code execution. And a VMware vCenter vulnerability that was uh, patched on May 25th is actively being exploited. Now, the exploit attempts are so far fairly focused. There are only a couple source IPs scanning for vulnerable systems. Also, around 15,000 vCenter servers that are currently exposed overall there's probably a fairly small number of vulnerable systems out there, but the ones that are vulnerable, of course, are pretty big target given that an exploit against vCenter would give you full access to the entire infrastructure that is operated out of this particular uh, vCenter server. And at this point, it's not really clear what the actual intent is, but it looks like that Metasploit backdoors are being installed using this vulnerability. Well, and this is it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.